There we are. Hey, hey. Man. Hey, I welcome to the Ron and John Show, brought to you by Veterans Lending Group. You know what today is? They are. You know, Say you again. Know what today is? It's it's someone's birthday. Oh, that was on the fourteenth, man. Yeah, yeah, the fourth. But we got to celebrate that today, though, right? I mean, we got we got in in, in light of yeah, that. Yeah, birthday, man. We got to celebrate. So, how should we celebrate? Well, I think we should uh, we should we should raise a glass. Okay. How, what, how you, what are you I'll, thinking, man? I've got, so I got uh, I got one of these, but also, hey, you know, in honor oh, of those twenty eight thousand yeah. five hundred troops that are serving on the Korean Peninsula right now. I got me some soju here, man. And it's the genuine stuff, not the stuff you buy down there in Tacoma, you know, for $9. <laughs> this stuff is straight from Seoul, man. So what do you got? I, well, what I've got, I've got a, uh, a, a nice uh, beer here uh, with, the, with the mug. It says O'Farrell there. But down on the bottom, it says live free or die. That's from my daughter. <laughs> it was a, awesome, it was a, brother. A birthday, a birthday present. So. Yeah, I think so I think we're we're having, it now. So if 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 this is clearly a shot, then you got a down with me, right? Oh, I, okay. Well, you know, Rangers lead the way, brother. Come on, all now. right, brother. We're doing that. Okay. Yeah, I, don't I, really have to, I don't have to get Leroy Petrie back on here to <laughs> like put a on me. You just call me. Hey, out. Happy Shout birthday out. to you, brother. Happy birthday to our army, the baddest army in the whole world. Hua. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. Boom. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome oh, to another episode, brother. as we said, of, of the Ron and John show. Uh, John, brother, how's, how's your week been? Which, let's let's get caught up on what uh, some current affairs and what you've been up to. Man, I've been doing a lot. You know, um, you know, Motivation Monday, it, you know, that it brought to you by Veterans Lending Group. I'm trying to send messages every Monday that will assist any kind of leader in a military or business context or in everyday life. And, uh, you know, it, that, that's always been a big hit, but it's also allowed me to have further discussions with people that are trying to make their way through, uh, you know, the corporate world or the military world and everything. But I will tell you, my oldest grandson turned 11 years old on the 15th. Nice. And we had a cookout yesterday that had, uh, you know, three of my four grandchildren here and my two oldest boys and their wives cooked a bunch of chow. I, I cannot compete with the Blacksican grill, man. All right. <laughs> but I think I can hold my own when it comes to burgers and dogs, man. There you, you, know? there you go. There you go. When it comes to salmon and all that other stuff. So we had a great time, man. How was your yeah. week, brother? Uh, it was good. It was good. You know, um, you know, one of the memorable ones that stick out uh, is Friday morning. Uh, our Friday morning PT session that we did, man, I'll, t I'll, t I'll tell you what, you know, that's the, that, that morning motivation with that, you know, really understanding what, when you say PME hard and, and a lot of people don't know what that means, you know, the, the physical, mental and emotional fitness. And, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of us need that little reminder or, 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 or kick in the tail a little bit. Um, because when you get out, it's different than being active, you know, I mean, you, you, you yeah. fall off of the, either one of those trains and it's easy to kind of slack off, but that one kicked me in the rear, got me, uh, got my motivation back up to get fit, stay physically fit. So uh, that that hey, carried I on. Gotta, I got to gotta give you a prop, brother. All right, my brother Ronald Farrell, always, you know, improvising. You know, <laughs> and so I said, hey, if you didn't do the PT on Friday, it was a butt kicker. I will tell you, it kicked my butt, and I do that stuff all the time. But if you didn't have a kettlebell, I told people, you know, get something. And my ranger brother here comes out with this big old water gel. Full of water. And I see him doing kettlebell swings, flossing that bad boy in the air. And I said, badass. And that's what we need more in this world. People, instead of, and I call them the ice people, I can't to everything. Instead of icing, figure out how to do something accomplish the task with uh, an improvised means. So yeah, good stuff, man. And it was on, you know, social media, it was on Facebook live. 
and everything. Yep. So and we got another one this Friday, and this one's going to be carrying, lifting, and moving heavy shit. So, uh, <laughs> so, so brother, grab, your already. <laughs> grab your duffel bag or something, or grab that <laughs> that water jug. <laughs> Don't do like some of our brothers and sisters do. Grab a duffel bag and put an inflated air mattress in it, man. <laughs> <laughs> or come out with some pillows or something, you know. So, uh, when, when, when I share when I share it on my page, I'm gonna I'm gonna rename it to uh, uh, just in case you need to carry a dead body, and then yeah. see what happens. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, hey, brother, we got a great show this week, man. You know, we, uh, yep. this is the third week in a row that uh, we have been talking the power of social media and the power of the internet in bringing people together to have discussion, you know, communication and dialogue. And this is our second week, brother, that we yep. are collaborating with another very popular show. Yes. Uh, and I'm excited about this one. And who's, and so, so the, uh, this show, I mean, obviously last week we had NCOPD live there uh, with, with uh, D Hicks. Uh, who do we got this week? Yeah, and got to give D Hicks a shout out. He, he had our out of the 10 shows we had. He's the second highest rated show we've had. You Absolutely. know, yeah, Holden is still the number one, you know, but uh, yeah, he was number two. This week we got another dynamic uh, professional in the United States Army, a very close personal friend of mine. Mongadai warrior, and he is a command sergeant major uh, serving at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas now. He is the brain child of freestyle every day for everybody, which is a very dynamic show and, and continuum throughout the week of dialogue that really gets after some of the challenges within the military uh, and some of the challenges, you know, socially that are going on. And this guy, I've known him for a few years, and he is one dynamic individual. And I'm excited to have Command Sergeant Major Mark Hurricane Halliburton as our guest of honor. And look who he is. There he there is. is. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was sitting backstage for the last seven minutes and 36 seconds. And as an eye <laughs> of hurricane that is coming along the East Coast, and I'm, it, it was just going, it's, it's going in rapid motion, and, and the passion, the energy was just going, and all of a sudden, bam, my hit landfall. Here I am. Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready. That, I'm so fired that, up right now. That is hey, it's awesome. great to have you, Mark. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule um, it, to, to join us here today, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Nothing but the best. Nothing. I mean, for you, you know, what you've done for our Army, what you've done for our craft, what you've done for the non-commissioned officer corps, you know, it, it, it's, it's bigger than what most people believe or what most people think or fathom. And watching you in action from a hillside across Whipple Field where I used to live and watching the SEAC just get after it, and it, it, it I'm just I'm just honored to be here. So I'm, I'm just I'm telling you. I, it may be a little small mini hurricane on this doggone show tonight. I'm just ready. <laughs> Hey, that's what we want, man. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We want, we want hey, so, uh, so, Mark, uh, you know, we've been, uh, Ron and I, for the last three weeks, um, have really been talking about uh, the power, the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, the disinformation, and, uh, you know, the disillusion, all everything encompassing with social media. And what the reason we wanted you to come on here, we had D. Hicks on last week. And uh, we're going to do another collaboration with James Breckenridge here in the future. But your show, when I came on your show, it, it was I was so impressed with how you are using it to really reach uh, an audience out there, not only of professional service members, but men and women that are you know generally concerned with you know our society and everything. So let and let me ask you this to start off: um, What was your vision as this came together? Because I will tell you, it is not just the show you do every week. It's the continuum of dialogue that goes on throughout the week. So what was your vision, man? It's simple. You know, I watched the pages, the CSM forums, the senior leader forums, feel great leader, company great leader, this, that, all great forums. But then I look at the eyes of that PFC sitting at the gate shack, Fort Myer, Virginia, 
Fort Benning, yeah. Fort Leonard Wood. Then I think about that squad leader out in the sticks. You know, yeah. there's no pages or platforms for them. You know, and I said, why are we segregated? Let's go for everybody. Everybody equally needs development, equally needs guidance, equally needs. We're an army of everybody. We're not an army of one. We're an army of everybody. Yeah. You know, we, we everyone needs development. That's how we become. So I sat there, and one night, 20th of March, roughly three months ago, I sat there, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mark, go downstairs, grab your iPad, and create a page, and call it Freestyle Friday. So I, re I rewind. 2017, I was in the academy. And, uh, and I was sitting there, and I was watching all of the strategic leaders and all the you know people come through and talk, and it was cool. And then I sat there, and I was like, wait a minute. You know, who is receiving all this wholesome goodness that I'm getting? That right. I'm getting this VIP knowledge. You know, PFC working at the, working BMM at, you know, Star Major Gate needs to have this information. I'll just translate this on my Facebook. And so one Friday night, I was sitting there and I was like, oh, I went live. I said, you know what? I'm just going to freestyle. I'm going to just talk about, you know, this <laughs> distinguished guest that came to talk to us today. And I, I basically regurgitated the knowledge. And, and, and then the feedback I got was astronomical. I was like, whoa, I didn't expect that. So then, fast forward, I, I kept doing it every time we had a guest. But for some reason, it was always on a Friday. And then then one one of my classmates that says, you know, Class 68, because it's the greatest class, no offense, CX, but it's the greatest <laughs> class in the history of SASMA, right? And so we sit there and we're like, wow, Freestyle Friday, that's what you should call it. So every Friday, I would go on and I would produce these videos. And then I kind of pushed back a little bit. Fast forward to Fort Leavenworth. I was sitting there and, and, and I, I was just so overcome with emotion one day and I just spewed a bunch of stuff out, professional, of course, on a Friday. And some soldier said the same thing, Sergeant Major, you should say Freestyle Friday. And on the 20th of March, which happens to be a Friday, the first day before spring, I said, you know what? We're going to create it. And I didn't have anybody. I It was me alone and unafraid. And I hit the I hit the start button on the on the live button on the first that Saturday morning. I actually was a run. I went around the installation here at the great place of Fort Leavenworth, America's hometown. And I was calling cadence and I was running and people start logging on and following. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're not a member. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How are we getting? And it took off like wildfire. And so within the first two weeks, there was two, three thousand members. I was like, I can't manage two, three thousand people. Well, I can as a brigade sergeant major. But at 2,000, 3,000 people, I was like, wow, that's a lot of people. I didn't help. You know, even a brigade sergeant major got five or six CSMs. I didn't yeah. help. So, you know, I did what the Army told me how to do, you know, go the, 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 the five or six route and kind of, you know, use your sphere of influence for five or six people. So Mega Hua Herman Estrada pops up on the net. And I was like, whoa, that guy's awesome. And so he became an admin. And then Garrett Griffin, the Fort Knox CSM, came up on the net. I was like, whoa, that guy's awesome. And then Master Sergeant Green out there, great Fort Lewis comes up on that. And then Sergeant Jackson, and then First Sergeant Timothy McKay, and First Sergeant Jeeves. And these people came together. And I was like, wow, wait a minute. We're 6,000 members, and we're still growing. I think we're going to hit 7,000 members by this weekend. And, I, and this was three months. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Why are we growing so fast? Because it's relevant, because Private Joe Snuffy and the guard shack at Fort whatever you call it has access to information that's not kept from him or her. That's yeah. the secret. And right. that was my intent. That was the idea and the passion behind it. Because I want soldiers, and I think that they made it, now shut up because I get along with it. When I sit there <laughs> and that private, one of the privates in my battalion came online and talked about how he was raised and what he did and why he loves the organization and why he loves the army. And then the next thing you know, followed by another soldier from another battalion across the great pond and another soldier. And all of a sudden, you know, there's this buzz going on that, and, and no one's attacking these soldiers, these senior leaders, no one's attacking them. They're, they're saying great job soldier. That's a yeah. awesome story. Wow. And to me, I sit right. back and I was like, aha, I had my aha moment. Give the soldiers or everyone, we make jokes 
in Iraq or Afghanistan or your truck. Hey, someone has a hot mic. Someone has a hot mic. <laughs> you get to listen to the really stuff that's really going on in the truck yeah. or at the cop. What's the difference between a soldier having a hot mic or being unmuted and saying what they really feel without fear of retribution in a safe and positive platform? Mic muted. <laughs> well, no, man, I, you, bro. go I ahead, Ron. Yeah, yeah. But my question is, is because it, it this seems to be a uh, somewhat of a recurring theme, right? Um, la obviously, last week we had uh, uh, D Hicks on with NCOPD Live, who who, who also you know had a, a similar aha moment where hey, just want to have a voice for uh, uh, for for everybody, uh, and, and here we are where, where you had that aha moment and you're like, well, you know, let's just send it, right? Well, you know, all gas, no brakes. And, and, and here you are uh, uh, doing the same thing with your platform. Um, but what, where is the breakdown then um, in the, you know, active duty infrastructure of why, why can't we replicate this or something like this within the ranks? Well, where's the pushback or what, what, I mean, what are you seeing from where you're standing? Oh, wow. That, you know what? I'm, I'm, you know, I don't care. I care about people's feelings, but I'm gonna hurt some people's feelings. <laughs> you know, you know the, pe the the issue is, quite honestly, is weird. There's a fear. There's a fear of embarrassment. There's a fear of making a mistake. There's a fear of of being exposed and being transparent. You know, when we, you, you when you limit yourself to Abrams Theater or another field house there at the great place of Fort Leonard Wood. And then you have a certain amount of people. There's a certain amount of people that you know, they either like me or love me. But when you open to yourself to the great escape of social media, where you don't know who's watching you and who's sharing it, you're, you, you become vulnerable. For some reason, leaders don't like to be vulnerable. So for mm -hmm. some reason, leaders don't like to, to have that feeling that if I make a mistake, I'm gonna get an angry red face because I, I called a column left on the wrong foot or I said fall out when I should have said fall in. It's, it's leaders that, that are scared to make mistakes that, that seemingly are perfect in their formation, but on social media are imperfect and now are critiqued, and it bothers them. And the second part is that we have so many people that, that are really successful, like Staff Sergeant D. Hicks and Lieutenant Colonel Powers and Command Sergeant Major Breckenridge, that are doing phenomenal things with social media, but then you have the naysayers. Uh, I bet he can't do that inside of a formation. I, I, I don't think their mm -hmm. formations look the way that they sound on social media. That's that's what I think the CIA calls those jealous, right? Yeah, so jealous. Jealous. Oh, jealous. Oh, jealous. Hey, jealous. Hey, hey, put it away. Hey, I just, I'm happy to do now. And, and saying, oh, well, X, Y, and Z. But you know what? What a great, I call this, I call social media the extension cord to the laptop. You know, you know, I, I'm only connected so much to the, you know, the internet if I'm within my organization. But what about the internet when I can actually expose to everybody and capture all of these audiences to truly showcase what my formation and or what information my formation may need and kind of network? I always say your network is your network. Meaning you can have all the money in the world. But if my network is bigger than your network, then I'm richer than you are because of who I associate with and, and who I connect with. Positive people trying to make positive changes. And, 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 and believe it or not, I thought I would receive more pushback and kind of more, you know, things that, uh, 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 things, oh, you should. Be. But it's been a lot of words of encouragement. You know, Command Sergeant Major Woodring the MDW CSM, reached out to me today, sent me a very encouraging email that it was thought it was thought out. It wasn't a bunch of cut and paste jargon. It was like, you know what? He's like, Mark, you're doing great things for our army. You're doing great things for our soldiers. And what you and a lot of our soldier leaders are doing and, and kind of attacking that is, is in a really good light. And I'm proud of you and keep doing it. That was encouraging. That was extremely encouraging. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I hope that answers your question, Ron. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hey, so first of all, I got to say the the term jailot has been added to the Urban Dictionary now. So <laughs> it's, it's an official term now, all right? So, all right, we, we all can drink a shot of soju for that, yeah. all right? Yeah, you know, you know, you know, hold on. Every day. Hey, 
If it's it, hey, yeah, we see it every day. But you know, I just to kind of you know add on to what you said, Mark. You know, when we look at leaders in somebody, you know, one of our followers just talked about transparency. You know, when when you are looking to be a transparent leader and you want to be someone that troops feel comfortable and confident coming to talk to you about something, then, you know, you got to your vulnerability is going to show up. Doesn't mean you're a bad leader. It means that you're human, you know, and, uh, you know, people. You know, every time the SEAC or retired SEAC shows up somewhere, Ron and I are going to Goodfellow Air Force Base here in August, and they're already talking about the Scunion. They're going to get their heavy pipe hitters out to put smoke the SEAC and Ranger Ron O'Farrell, okay? <laughs> hey, feel free to smoke me, okay? That means that, you know, if puking is authorized and, and I'll suck it up, you know? But the bottom line is I ain't that 12-minute two-miler anymore, brother. That shit sailed about... 12 years ago, you know, and if they're going to run, you know, two miles in 12 minutes, Ron and I will meet them back at the showers. Okay. If I'm, if I am humble enough and I, ex, you know, uh, exude uh, humility, then, you know, troops are going to understand, you know, because they understand everybody is human. That's why I'm so, uh, much a fan of social media because of what it does, you know, and the power it brings. And I love hearing on your show, a battalion sergeant major coming on, uh, on any given time, putting a video and giving their perspective and opinion on a certain subject. Some people will look at that saying, well, that battalion sergeant major is trying to make it out like he's the subject matter expert on it. No, he's giving his perspective. As a leader, all right, and and so God bless him. I hope more sergeant majors, first sergeants, platoon sergeants, squad leaders, team leaders. I hope that gate guard at uh, Fort Myer comes on and gives their perspective of what they see. Because if we don't have a 360 degree perspective in terms of communication and dialogue, then we are going to shut a certain audience out, and you know. Our, our organization will not be as efficient and effective as it could be if we had this 360 degree approach. So I applaud you, brother. I yeah. applaud you. It's great. And you know, if you're uh, if you're just joining us, uh, this is the Ron and John Show, brought to you by Veterans Lending Group, and we have our guest speaker is Command Sergeant Major Mark Hurricane Halliburton. And uh, you know the from uh, freestyle. I love saying it. Freestyle every day for everybody. <laughs> I got to get that down. Boom. I got to get that down. You know, I, got, I, got, I got a question on that. You know? So, hey, Ron, check this out. So yeah, yeah. If, picture yourself. Picture Mark Hurricane Halliburton in some tights, man. You all right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your wife might appreciate that. But picture him in some tights. And he's got a glitter oh. jacket on. Rick Flair. And all of a sudden, he's ready to get introduced into his WWE title match. And now, and making his way to the ring is Command Sergeant Major Mark Hurricane Halliburton. Freestyle every day for everybody. Mark, what would your walkout be? Let's see. Let's see the body language for the walkout. See, my walkout, my walkout would be, is that's easy. My walkout would be, all the sprinkler systems in the building would come on and shower every <laughs> day. You know, because to truly understand the storm, you got to feel the storm. You got to be realistic. It can't come out and dance to a hurricane. You know, when a hurricane happens, no one's dancing, they're running. And so, when That's they, right. when they, when they, when I, want, I want people to just like, holy crap, I got this close to a hurricane. And I'll tell you later how I got that name. It's pretty <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so I, I got a question on the with the um you know all the interaction that's happening on this on, on your on your site which is fantastic all 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 ranks and, and it sounds i mean are you getting different brand so two two questions uh one is is are you also getting different uh branches uh to to join and, and be heard as well uh and, and the other part is what what kind of things are maybe in place or, or what's the, 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 the climate to where someone would feel confident in sharing 
without it getting back to their chain of command or because I mean, this is the this if I've ever seen anything like this, I mean, this is this is the ultimate open door policy. I mean, you, you, you have <laughs> never seen anything like this. I mean, we talked, I mean, let's down, 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 man. Because 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 down, down. Hurricane, the, 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 the deal is, is, you know, we keep it real here, Hurricane. So, so right. the open door policy is is, a, is the more like the, the open door backstab you policy in most organizations because it's right. like, well, did you go to your squad? You just said, yeah, I've talked to them. Well, <clears throat> there's that, that, that resistance. You get there and then you get, you get fucking crushed is what you usually right. get, right? Right. So, right. But it sounds like some of those barriers have have have, have kind of fought, you know, or or right. been brought down into an environment they feel safe. So, again, are there other branches that are joining, and 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 what makes somebody feel like they ain't gonna get backstabbed by you all? You know, it, it starts like this. You know, it starts with you understanding who you are. You have to make yourself be human, right? You have to humanize yourself. Once you mm -hmm. humanize yourself, soldiers have to understand what does a leader look like 20 years in the Army, 10 years in the Army, yeah. 15 years in the Army, 12 years in the Army. You know, what does Absolutely. personal life look like? There's no book on personal life. There's a look on what a squad leader looks like in a combat zone, in a Humvee, or a herringbone formation, or operating as a tank commander. There's books for that, but there's no books on how to be a father, how to balance time, how to do this. There's no books for that. And so- Absolutely. How do you how do you become transparent? You become, you have to show it. There's many ways you can show it. There's multiple ways you can show, it, but soldiers got to see it. Not only see, it, but they got to believe it. They got to say, "Wow, you can do that." Th that that's just cause you can't be a standard bearer. You got to be a standard bearer at work and at home, so they can see. Oh, wow! You got to give them a metric to measure themselves. And so then, when the person comes through, and then they want to say, "Okay, well, how you become ultimately." approachable they can come to bring you they don't have a fear to come on the platform because you've demonstrated what you expect you you, you you don't say well say one thing and then you come to the office and you get this roaring lion ripping your face off no they get the same person that 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 you said you were on on your podcast or your webinar and so i firmly believe as you humanizing yourself but the fact of the matter is is sometimes you know, we get people, the jealots, not even the jealous, the people that just don't understand and sit back in the background yeah. and say, well, I don't agree with that. And, you know, when I was coming up and, well, well, well I never did that. And you got to be careful. You know what? At the end of the day, at the, all the experience and all the money that the Army has trained to make me a professional and the value base that I have based on me of being a leader, I think I should be okay to make sound decisions if, if the army trusts me with, as of this morning, you know, a certain amount of soldiers, you know, I got to keep on yeah. sick, with a certain amount of soldiers that they trust me with. I'm pretty sure they can trust me to make, make sound and timely decisions based on my level of proficiency, experience, and, and you know, and demonstrated performance and potential. It, at the end of the day, you know, we got to be what we expect our soldiers to see us as and not just be something like that that, that we want them to hope we are. We got to demonstrate that. I hope that's your cancer one. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. You know, I, hey, I, was, I was told never. Got to give a shout out. We got a warrant officer on here. Okay. Warrant officer, call. Glad to have you on here, brother. And your entrenching tool is on the way. I signed it and it's on the way back to you. And uh, Vic, in the background, can you pull up our good buddy, our Cliffy from, you know, cheers, Ed Sullivan. Pull up his question because uh, it's a pretty good question Cliffy. for uh, Mark. <laughs> you can see that question there. It's what here. are your thoughts? Professional jellots be rehabilitated? Ooh, that's can a they good be one. rehabilitated? You know, ultimately, you know, if, if, if I'm jealous of someone, Either they have something that I don't have, have a talent in which I don't have, or have, uh, or, or, or I can do something exceptionally well that I want to do that I can't do. You can't rehab somebody whose passion is to be who you are. You can't, yeah. because no matter what, you're always going to be, you know, if, if you're jealous of, of if, you, if you're limited on who you, what you can do, be, and then you have to say to yourself, if I want to do this, okay, I want to be a squad leader. And this squad leader 
Staff Sergeant Lunchme is the best thing smoking. He walks nice. He talks nice. He's very articulate. Soldiers respect him. He's a deliberate and ethical leader. But I make mistakes, can't run fast as he can. My ACFT score sucks. I suck at college. I'm very nervous when I get in front of my squad. And everything that that staff sergeant lunch me can do, I can't. And so how can I rehabilitate? The way you rehabilitate is to train that sergeant to be like staff sergeant lunch me. You can't, you know, you, you can't sit back and, and, and rehab a, a deficit. You have to meet the standard. You, you know, if you can't be staff sergeant lunch me, then I, you know what? <sighs> Soldier for life, thank you for your service, but you can't sit back and say, ah, well, I, you know, I, let, let's, how can every, you know what? There's a one, there's one Michael Jordan for a reason. There's one Babe Ruth for a reason. There's one Peyton Manning for a reason. Yeah. These are exceptional talents. There's one, there's one SEAC for a reason. There's one senior enlisted advisor to the chairman for a reason. This is person that has risen through the ranks. They're exceptional talent. You, you know what? You can't replicate that. It's one person for a reason. There's one CSM in a formation for a reason. Yeah. Everyone can't be the CSM. It's demonstrated performance and potential. And you select those individuals. And guess what? If you don't meet that bill, like Command Star Major Lunch Me did, you know, and you want to be jealous, find yourself a different employment. Or you can do something that you're good at, a skill set that you're good at, and support the team. But with, when you're about when you're about supporting yourself and making yourself replicate who you're jealous of, then you're not about the organization or the team. You're about yourself. You're selfish. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's somebody, if there's a better CSM than me, I'm acknowledge that CSM because I want to be like that CSM, not jealous of them, because if their soldiers are getting outstanding leadership, which we all entitled to, then damn it, I want to do what that soldier, that CSM does and make sure my right. soldiers get the leadership that his soldiers get yeah. and not be jealous of it and let my soldiers suffer. I digress a yeah. No, hey, great. And I'll just add on. So yeah. to Ed Sullivan, so professional jellots live in victimhood. Ooh. Okay. And there's no dignity in victimhood. So um, they will say they will. And, and I, I mentioned this on your show, Hurricane, yeah. that they will look for ways to, you know, marginalize the accomplishments of others because they can't meet that accomplishment until they are taught how to not be a victim and how to be someone that is a learning leader that may not have the appropriate knowledge, skills, and attributes right now to be a Mark Hurricane Halliburton or a Ron O'Farrell or whatever it is, and they understand that, and you provided them a direction to get after it, to may not rise up to that same person, but to rise up to be someone that has dignity and self-respect and will go out and get after the mission and be a team player. If they refuse to do that and they continue to live in victimhood, they are going to be irrelevant to the organization and potentially a cancer to the organization. There's there's the, there's something that, that you had said before, uh, John, and, and I'll do, it, it kind of goes in an analogy that I was raised with in, in, in Ranger Battalion was it goes something like this. Um, we are not the men today uh, because we we are, we are rangers. We, we, we are rangers because of the men we were. Right. But that, and that also goes, so that's, there's that aspect of it. Right. And then there goes the other aspect of what, what you said before, John is if you are a shithead leader in the army, you're probably going to be a shithead when you get out of the army. Okay. So it's, it's, it's it, to get to what you're saying, Ed is can someone be re rehabilitated? I feel that it's, unless they can change those patterns of, of who they are at their core, which could start when they were a damn kid. As we learn, you know, as, as we get older and learn about ourselves with PTSD and TBI and all this other stuff, like what exasperates some of those things is shit that happened when we were, that didn't have to do with the military. And just as we, we got, went along, it, it, you know, it compounded those things. So if, if you're, if, if you can't recognize that you, that it's you, like we also said this, sometimes, you have to recognize that how many how many players you have to change on the team to figure out as the coach might be you, right? That's, 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 that's what it's about, managing talent. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, and that that that's that's that reflection. And sometimes, you know, if somebody doesn't have that the balls to really look in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm I'm going to own that and just own it. 
You know, as Brooke Villano says, swallow the frog. If you got some some bad news to deliver, even if it's with yourself and being real with yourself and PME in, then then that's what it is. And that's what that's yeah, that's 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 my take on that. So hey, yeah. so we're we're all about phrases here, and I think we got another one. Uh, the the author is Mark Hurricane Halliburton, but Jay and Marie Val <laughs> have summed up your synopsis of professional gelots rehabilitating to you either inspire or retire. That's it. Oh, that's it. And so, remember, see, I told you I was on the page venting for a nine minute rant. That's what yeah. I, you know, it was inspire or retire. You know, either you inspire your men and women or retire. It's that simple. There, yeah. It's, it's cut and dry, simple, plain. You pick your favorite term, inspire or retire. Here, complaint point. No, no question. I'm with you. Hey, you inspire, provide purpose, motivation, direction, discipline. And, and lead by example or move out because there's somebody behind you that's willing to do that, man. I'm yeah. with you. Oh, yeah. You know? oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I want, I want to, I want to kind of switch this up a little bit, John, you know, you know, as we well switch it up, but always also go in the trend of what we, uh, we talk about here in the Ron and John show, Mark. Uh, and if y'all are curious, you are just joining us. This is the Ron and John show brought to you by veterans landing group. And we have uh, command Sergeant major uh, Mark hurricane Halliburton from Freestyle, I, I'm gonna mess that. I'm gonna let you take that one. Oh, no, we gotta hear it from Hurricane. Hurricane, Hurricane. Energy, freestyle man. every day for everybody. Well, staff sergeant hit hashtag professional SGL. He gave me a nickname on Sunday. He called it Fifi. It's easy. Fifi, <laughs> freestyle every day for everybody. <laughs> Fifi, it's easy to remember. <laughs> you know, so he hashtag it. So if you hashtag Fifi, you'll probably pull up our page. Boom. <laughs> There you go. There's, 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 there's Fifi. So, so with that is, is, uh, you know, we always talk about like to touch on transition and see what, what our guest kind of plans are, are, are for that. And um, so my question is, is, is to you is uh, what, you know, where are you at in, in your, uh, in your career as far as, uh, you know, forecasting what that transition looks like and how do you plan on using your experience to continue with Fifi and share all the way down to, the, the dis disseminating information to the lowest level to uh, uh, to go through, you know, humanizing yourself, you know? Uh, that's a great question, Ron. Oh, my gosh. That's a great question <laughs> to the point where I got to take hey, maybe five or seven button. seconds. Yes, <laughs> Martin, <laughs> we're listening. Oh, man. Wow. I, I just, oh, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, being a goal-oriented leader, is very important to our soldiers, you know, because if, if if we're not truly trying to be goal oriented, we can't require a soldier to be goal oriented and say, well, yeah. you know, you hear a lot of these, well, you know, you know, I'm not worried about me. I'm just worried about you. But but at the end of the day, you know, if you're not progressing, developing as a leader, then are you truly becoming the best version of yourself? That's what you right. deserve. You can't yeah. request yeah. them to do something and be the best version of yourself if if you felt that you've arrived. And right. so I, I'm, I'm in a constant state of learning. I want to learn from the best. You know, I want to learn from the best private, the youngest private who schooled me today, by the way. And I want to learn from senior leaders. And, 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 and so if I remain humble and receptive to the point where a soldier can come up to me like they did Two days ago, when we had your analysis, the soldier comes up to me, private, 18 years in the Army. He's like, Sergeant Major, uh, I bet you don't know what, why the the ASU, ASU surface top is darker than the pants. 18-year-old private. I was like, well, first of all, I'm surprised that you know. And if you know, I want to coin your squad leader because that's freaking phenomenal. But that he had the confidence to come up to me and ask me, did I know that question? To me, that was the biggest win in the world because that means that we're in a learning organization. And that was my check on learning. If an 18 year old yeah. private can come up to the command star major of the battalion and ask me that question that every command star major should know, I looked at my battalion commander. I was like, you know what? That's a win. That's a win. That's a win. That's a win. And that way they're comfortable and <laughs> in, in, in feeling that if they know something to share it with seniors and not be afraid to, well, uh, I'm not going to say it because he's going to get mad if he don't know, because guess what? What if I didn't know? What if I, yeah. he took an, he took a calculated risk 
to embarrass right. the CSM, but he didn't care. He felt that he wanted to show that what his squad leader showed him and taught him was more important than an ass chewing that he got if he embarrassed the CSM. That's a win. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and absolutely. Mark, I got a question for you, just your opinion. So yeah. you remember the book Simon Sinek wrote, The Starfish and the Spider, and it was about uh, starfish organizations being kind of leaderless while spider organizations, you know, the head spider and everything. Give me your opinion. I have my opinion on leaderless organizations in a military context. Give me your opinion on that. You know, Siak, we talked to this about today. When I called you earlier, you know, yeah. in, in a perfect army, if all of us was robots, perfectly wired, perfectly indestructible, artificial intelligence, smartest things in the world, and this replaced our army, then, then they would have to be programmed to do a certain task. But the difference what makes us great in a leader organization is a leader demonstrating the will to win. It's irreplaceable. You can't program that into a bot. You can't program right. the conviction of victory into a robot. You can program this is an objective to a robot, but the will and the passion and to give up everything you have in order to accomplish your mission cannot be programmed into a damn robot. <laughs> and so to me, when when you have a leader's organization, that, that you have a bunch of employees, not 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 professionals. We're in a profession Absolutely. that we swear an oath to. We're in a profession that 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 men and women have lost their lives in order to supported by idea that all men are created equal, that we're built off a country founded by our forefathers, that this is what we are. And so to me, a leaderless organization is an organization that's, that that laps a purpose, uh, a, yeah. that laps the will, that laps passion. Yeah. And people yeah. win wars. Not, and people have you, you know, it's called world leaders. We don't have world managers. We don't have world bosses. We don't have yeah. world supervisors. We have world yeah. leaders. Leaders must be able to lead soldiers. And and to have an organization absent as a leader is having a, a country absent without an army. Yeah. Like a yeah, yeah. You know, the other thing, you know, so as an organization, if you don't have a leader, how do you create vision? And then how do you prioritize? You know, when all of a sudden it's a, it's a kumbaya event and everybody – you know, who's who's the dissenting voice that says, hey, look, we're going to go this way and we got to get after the mission because we without a leader, we could sit around and argue about shit all day long, man. And we ain't accomplished nothing. And if it's an objective in combat or something like that, we could be sitting at the dang line of departure right. while the platoon on our left or right is on the objective, kicking the shit out of the enemy because <laughs> we haven't figured out. How to get after this plan because we ain't got nobody in charge, man. Right. I love it, brother. Ron, you know, over to you. you. You said vision. On yeah. Sunday, I, I posted a video about the difference between sight and vision. You know, it's yeah. funny. It's not funny, but it's coincidence that the year 2020 is what most people say is perfect vision. Right? 2020 oh. is perfect vision. Yeah. No shit. But, 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 vision, but, but vision sometimes can be things that you can't see that is connected That's to right. emotion that you believe so strongly that you see it into existence. Sight is an object Ooh. that you is validated and collaborated through your brain. So if your brain sees it, it communicates with what you see and says, that's what you see. But vision can be, it can be the absence of seeing not, things not seen, but connected with that's emotion right. can come to fruition because people like-minded believe so strongly like our army. There can be an organizational vision can be created by a commander, but if it's not emotionally connected to the soldiers in the organization, it's just an idea. A vision Ooh. is connected by yeah. emotion. It's connected by the will to share a value that is bigger than us, that no matter what, it's about the organization, not us. And that's emotion. And so to me, when you said vision, Siak, you got me fired up because that, that's it. That, you know, if a commander sits there and creates a vision, but there's no emotion or buy-in from the organization, it's just an idea. That's all. That's it is. right. Yeah, that's, that's right. Idea. 
Yeah. Ideas are ideas, but vision is when collaboration between the soldiers, officers, non-commissioned officers get together emotionally and say, this is what we want to do. And if someone doesn't do this, we're going to hold them accountable because we're emotionally connected to this. Well, that's, and that, uh, the vision of that is that for the of faith, right? I mean, that, 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 that puts faith, right? Yes. That puts faith. Hey, that's what creates faith. And here's the aircraft. I mean, I'm ready to get on a plane and follow Mark Hurricane Halliburton to the dang gates hey, of hell. Let's now, go. Man. Let's I go. got my e school ready, man. Hey, I got, hey, I got, I'm got. i ready, bro. Hold on. Man, man. I'm ready. Yes. Let's go. You got us yes. fired up. You know, I, and that's I, the thing I, is, I, that, is that, that like you said, but it, it creates that faith, right? And faith, right? It, it overcomes fear. And what's fear? False evidence is appearing real, right? <laughs> now, what, what happens with faith? Yes. Faith is walking forward in spite of those fears, of those yes. false evidence is appearing real. And the only way to really do that is to emotionally collect, connect with an individual that really makes them feel that they have the faith to be able to have to 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 to, to, to walk forward. Oof. And what is that? That comes out to fucking courage. And that's why we yes. are who we are. That's why yes. we, that's why nowhere in the world is something like this replicated because of the faith that we put in to that 18 year old that's steering that big ass carrier to that 18 year old that has the balls or the whatever to walk up to command sergeant major and say, Hey, did you know this? Despite of this ass chewing because the faith that yeah. that's what you put in wow. got me fired up now. Come on. Hey, I'm, I'm you can't do it in the world. We started all this stuff up, man. Hey, man. Let's go. Hey. Let's go. I, love, I, just, it's just, I just love this. You know, it just, you know, and, and, and so I had a question the other day saying, well, Sergeant Major, do you like take a rip it before you go on the internet or go live or, or, or uh, Red Bull and just get all caffeined up? And I was like, well, go ask the 40th Military Police Battalion uh, uh, that same question they would tell you. I don't drink energy drinks. I am who I am now without energy drinks. If I was to take an energy drink, they would have to handcuff me to a chair to keep me still from going absolutely freaking insane. I will lose my shit. Because I, you know, because I, you know, gentlemen, I care about our craft so much. I am so passionate about what we do, you know, and, and because it's a privilege, it's an honor. And, and to, to sit here as a CSM of a battalion, you, you, that you really believe that when hell as a C as a master sergeant sitting in the master bedroom, when the CIA got on stage, I was starstruck because I was like, wow, you know, that's a senior enlisted member of all of our Department of Defense is sitting up here talking to us and delivers a message. And I was intimidated. And I was like, well, well, maybe, well, what happens when I become and I was a master sergeant at the time. What about that that lonely private in that foxhole? Alone and unafraid, and, and and thinking, imagine, can I be that? Can I become that? And then there's encouragement. There's 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 hope. And then you you go through and you get great leaders that kind of mentor you, develop you through this path. And next thing you know, you end up in front of a formation that's a battalion size. He's like, holy crap, am I gonna fail? Am I gonna mess this up? But then you get the encouragement from your peers and other people and seniors and mentors to kind of reassure you that you're doing okay. And that helped you reassure that those kids in that formation that they're doing okay, that they're gonna be all right. That you know, Sergeant that's Major, right. first sergeant, sergeant, platoon sergeant, squad leaders, team leaders got them. And, and and to me, that that's what's important. That's that passion that you know that you can't really recreate. You can't fake the funk. Soldiers will know a bullshit leader when they see it. They know a fake that's when right. they see it. It's like just like like a like a pawn star guy. When you bring a fake chain into a pawn star guy, they know it when they see it. They know a fake chain when they see it. They don't need to put bleach or whatever on it. They can see it and say, this is fake. Soldiers can too. I don't know why. They know it's a too lazy from a mile away, man. They can. They can see you. They can see you turning green before you approach them. Hey, so, uh, hey, so uh, Vic, can you bring up uh, Eric Chris's question, please? Okay. Uh, obviously, we got to give some love to career counselors here, Mark. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm getting excited. Hey, I'm getting excited. So, last year, hey, shout out to Sergeant First Class Bradley Olette. So, Sergeant First Class Bradley Olette, our battalion finished fourth in all of Force Com and retention. All of Force Com, fourth, right? And, and it's because I'm my that. battalion. 
career counselor, gloves off. I'm with you, you with me. Believe it or not, the only person I rate in that entire battalion is that career counselor. That's the only person I rate. That's it. I don't rate anybody else. No one. And so to me, that's my soldier. That's my team. That's my career counselor. So the, the, the retention of our army depends on me and that damn battalion and that career counselor. And me and him are one. He and I are one. Whatever he needs, resources, what, time, you name it. And our numbers shot through the roof. We get an email, and then we get our Eagle Award for Forcecom says, hey, congratulations, you're number fourth in all of Forcecom. God knows how many battalions in Forcecom. But when a corrections and detentions battalion is number four in Forcecom for retention, that's a win for me. A lot of the other accolades and then my soldiers want to stay in my formation, that's a win. But you know what's more important? That my sister battalion, the 705th Military Police Battalion, was number one in force common retention. So as a brigade, the battalions and sign that brigade was number one in four. It's a culture. It's soldiers yeah. seeing leaders that give a shit about them and want to care and want to keep them there. And so, so Chris, that it's reflective of our brigade sergeant major down to us, down to our career council, that the retention of our soldiers is ultimately priority number one for us as a CSM. That's awesome. All right. Hey, so, uh, tips. hey so I think it's rapid fire time here, Ron. Oh, rapid, oh, fire time. rapid fire with the hurricane. If All right. So I'm going to go first. Go ahead. Send, send it. Send it. All gas, no break. Hurricane. You have been tasked to do a top secret mission okay. for the United States against a foreign actor in a country. And it's going to be a tough mission. It's going to be you and one other person. And you're going to go into harm's way and you've got to overcome and win in a very tough fight. So I'm going to give you three candidates to take with you. All right. You can take. Mega Hua himself, because I know he's tuned in now, Herman okay. Estrada, who is just okay. like, he, he is like the new Terminator, you know? Mega uh, what? what? I, yeah. And then you, or you can take a guy that is an up and coming guy and that is moving out and, and he's part of uh, the freestyle every day for everybody. RLGJ, Robert L. Green Jr., you can take him with you. Or you can take the man from Breck Live, CSM James Breckenridge. Who are you taking with you on this secret mission? And you cannot fail, brother. You have to guarantee success on this mission. The freedom of the United States of America depends on it. Who are you taking with you? That's an easy question. No offense, but Siak, you know as well. When you get three CSMs in a room, you're going to lose a war anyway. I'm going to ask Sergeant Green. That's an easy question. That's an easy yeah. question. Master Sergeant Green is the one hell of a moderator. He's the only person I know that can moderate NCOPD Live for uh, Staff Sergeant Hicks on Sunday for his anniversary, then turn right around and moderate freestyle every day for everybody succinctly without any hiccups or mistakes. You know, you every once in a while, you need a person that can operate independently, alone and unafraid, behind the enemy lines, and no one knows who they are, and that is green. And sooner or later, he's going to come behind the curtain because he's going to replace guys like me. That's guys, right. He's a future. And so... It, he is a, he's in the back observing, you know, the Estradas and the Breckenridge and the Halliburton's of the world. But when it's his time, oh, boy, it's going to be his time. And I will 100% hey, so, take that guy. And I will tell you, he is such an eloquent speaker. I bet he could just talk the enemy into surrendering and then feel guilty about the uh, armed incursion they even did, man. So I think he, he will reduce the loss of life by that eloquent voice of his talking those dang enemy fighters down and uh, you guys come back with like nothing but prisoners, you know? Absolutely. That's who he is. He yeah. is the one. Oh, wow. And oh, wow. I, he all right, about that guy. All right, here we go. So, all right. So your, your life is being, has been written into a movie, oh, right? Okay. Now you, you, the, 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 the producers come down with three options to play you, right? And those three options are Mike Tyson, Samuel L. Jackson, or Dave Chappelle. <laughs> oh, wow. So, who oh, is wow. going to play and so, Command wow. Sergeant Major? Oh, wow. 
Everybody, Hurricane everybody, Albert, who's that? Go ahead, everybody watching right now, go ahead and hashtag what you think because you already know the answer to that damn question. You know, <laughs> all I'm going to say is snakes on a plane. That's all I'm going to say. Snakes <laughs> on a plane. That's the answer to the question. Snakes on the plane. <laughs> Fair, see, I don't even have to. So Jim Scully, he's a CAC T sergeant major for General Michael here at Fort Leavenworth. He just started laughing because he knew automatically knew who the hell I was going to do. <laughs> Jackson, what hey, hey. is it, Sam? Is there one of those situations where, where they say we're uh, like that that meme? It said it said uh, 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 no offense to Morgan Freeman, but I need somebody to say motherfucker a few more times in my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got another question. We're on rapid fire here. This is the Ron and John Show brought to you by Veterans Lending Group. And we got Mark Hurricane Halliburton from Freestyle Every Day for Everybody. Now, I got to ask a technical question, Mark. Okay. All right. You're a military policeman, career military policeman. I am. Um, you know your craft. I do. Your MPs, your corrections folks know their craft and everything. So I've got to understand as someone, Ron and I, or, you know, you know, I'm, I'm a freaking recon guy. He's a he's a freaking commo guy and everything. Hey, in, in military police world or in police world, what's a phone book used for? Why is the phone book so popular with policemen, man? What's up with that? You know, <laughs> you know, who? And uh, you know, <laughs> some jokes that are about to come up. So go ahead and hashtag what you believe. But you know what? <laughs> I, I grew up in the army. You know where we we we've changed in the way the the hidden meaning of what the phone book is. We've changed that meaning. You know, and so you know when there's a phone book sitting on the front porch, the meaning has changed, and uh, what the phone book me has changed. You know, and so today, you know, no one has a phone book anymore. You know, I know. I mean, yeah. is yeah. this a critical loss of resources in the in the military police domain, man? Isn't there going to be a ball peen hammer taped to that thing on the backside? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you know what that I, that I, that is one slippery slip. I I'm gonna tell you when we go when we hit the unlive button, I'm gonna unload. But right now, I because there's so many inside jokes, and so <laughs> many things that associate with that damn phone book. I mean, the stories that can be told with the phone book. That you get when you get when you, you first get to your duty stage. Oh, you know what? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man. So I've, I've got a I've got one now, we'll, and then okay. we'll, we'll wrap it up here. So, um, I, uh, I I I usually do a Google search on uh, on my on, on the guests. You know, the ones okay. that I don't know. Like, oh, let me let me do a little research here. And you know, even when I when I first first met John, um, you know, Google search pops up, surrender or die speech, and you know, the whole yeah. nine thing. And but when I googled you, um, this picture came up, and uh, it was you in formation, knife handing. Oh yeah. A, <laughs> oh yeah. Some drill instructors. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> on yeah. this field, and I kept scrolling down, and it kept just having this, 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 this photo. What was what was going on in that in this photo when you were knife handing this this group of individuals? Or I mean, that's what, the day. Cause it's going on still to this day. I, that's the day I was in PTs and I had my black shirt on. I was a, I was a chief instructor to drill sergeant school, and so that believe it or not, gentlemen, that was my dream job. To be the chief instructor of the United States Army Drill Sergeant Academy was my dream job. To put on a campaign hat as a first sergeant. Oh, in story. So that day is when the name Hurricane was created, and it's <laughs> funny that you bring that picture. So what happened? is a soldier shows up to the drill, United States Army Drill Sergeant School, you know, where, where non-commissioned officers in their craft show up to this professional institution to, to about to get to train American sons and daughters. And this soldier shows up and he has on one black sock and one, <laughs> uh, and one uh, white sock, right? And so they, they, they try to hide him and get him back to the barracks. But I see it. I see it instantly. My eye, it, it dialed in. And, and, and I let him go back to the barracks. He came back to the barracks. His socks was right. And all of a sudden, I kept turning around and spinning with his knife hand. 
I was like, oh my God, the drip DM sales was like, first turn, you were like a freaking hurricane. It was like you, it was, it was so epic. The, the, every, I mean, he's like people, even the commandant, command sergeant major Michael McCoy, I love him to death. He stopped to open up his window to hear this ass chewing. It was, it was, because I was, I couldn't believe, it was a sergeant first class. And I, I, I had a moment. Maddest I probably ever, I probably worst ass shit ever give anybody. But that name walk away, and and these pictures start floating up. And the next, and what happened is this guy, he was a professional for, uh, photographer, uh, DCG IMT, and so he would come down and he was taking these pictures, and they start socializing them everywhere. The next thing you know, I'm 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 broadcasting this very angry person that just is, and they thought it was a drill sergeant. They're like, no, that's the first sergeant. <laughs> they were like, imagine how the drill sergeants were. They were some meat eaters. I mean, my drill sergeant Stover, Maddox, uh, uh, Russell, uh, uh, Beard, I'll name them, because they, they, they were meat eaters. I mean, it was like when they went outside, it was piranhas because they will uphold the standards because, you know, the, 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 the defense of our country was dependent on the training of our those privates. Right. And, and and that's what I believe. I was like, we will send the best doggone drill sergeant to the IET environment. And I believe we did. And yeah. so that kind of, they had to feed off my emotion. And I had to be a very passionate and, and, and convicted first sergeant if I wanted my drill sergeant to be the same. Absolutely. Yeah. That, what, a, what a story. Did that happen to be a Ranger Stover? Uh, no, this was a drill sergeant of the year Stover. Oh, okay. Okay. Different he was one. a 19 yeah, yeah. series. He's a 19. I'm going to tell you, he's going to be a CSM. I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up at a very nominative level. He was probably the smartest non-commissioned officer I've ever had the privilege of serving with. And I say with because sometimes he led me. He was a yeah. brilliant individual. I mean, a brilliant individual. And he ended up be going on to become the drill sergeant of the year for the Army. And now he's a first sergeant right now. But, yeah, uh, Stover, That's awesome. Stover. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, hey, uh, Mark, we're getting down towards the end here, brother. But uh, so, as Ron and you know mentioned when we first came on, the 14th of June was the Army birthday. Yep. So Ron and I did a toast, and we would be remiss. If remiss. We did not have our special guest. I love saying this, man. It, Command Sergeant Major Mark Hurricane Halliburton, freestyle every day for yes. everybody. If we didn't ask you, uh, you go on to be not only a future nominative level star major, but WWE champion as well. Yes. If you would take a toast for us, and if you would offer a toast for the Army's birthday. I will absolutely offer a toast for the Army's birthday. So, you know, me, I have my beer. There we go. America's beer. It's I got a, like, a, a hashtag, hashtag Jim Scully. So my neighbor, Jim Scully, he got me on uh, Bud Light. But, you know... Uh, happy birthday, Army. But but before we say happy birthday, Army, my battalion birthday was June 11th. And we turned Ooh. 75 years old. And we had a birthday party for our battalion. And, of course, our Army's birthday was the 14th. So to the 40th Military Police Battalion and United States Army. Ooh, cheers. All right, brother. Mark, you got... Uh... Parting words, brother. What what do you what would you like the audience to know? I first of all, I want to say thank you so much for being on here. When I invited you on, I was so excited that you were coming on because Ron and I love to have fun. We love to make this about being human. Right. And uh, obviously, you, you know, doesn't you? You're the leader you are and everything, and, and which is why you've made it where you're at. But having you on has been such a treat, man. It's the energy we've had today. So uh, we're going to allow you to say some parting words to the audience here as we get ready to wind down, man. You know, it's an honor and a privilege, first of all, to be invited to your guys' show. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a guy from a small town. Um, you know, for, I have a lot of brothers and sisters, and, and my dream was to be in the Army. And and here I am doing exactly what I wanted to do since I was nine years old. 
to be surrounded by the Royal Grace Fighting Force and the best people that a country has to offer. And I'm here. And I'm a privilege. I'm, I'm, I say privileged because, you know, not everyone gets this opportunity. Some people are limited because of physical ailments or medical issues or, you know, criminal records or whatever. But here I am privileged because I meet the requirements to serve my country, which which yeah. is I can't put in. I can't thank you. And I can't thank the army enough for allowing me to continue to serve and give me the privilege to serve. One thing I would like to, to express is, you know, we, we, we as, as soldiers have to remember that it's not about us. You know, our views, our personal views, whether spiritual, mental, it's, it's, it's about our army. And if we yeah. place our views before the contractual obligation in which we sign, but more importantly, the, 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 the Constitution, then we truly need to retire. Be, we, because our army is a perfect system ran by humans who are imperfect, but it's right. a perfect system. And, and our views and our opinions and our will and our, and our passion is what keeps our army strong. It's not our negative opinion, negative views, and, and ideology that are not consistent with the Constitution which keep our army strong. And if your ideals are not aligned with our governing doctrine, then you need to get the hell out of the army, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the way I truly feel. And, 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 and that's how our soldiers should feel. And to me, that's the, that's the way we, that's what made me continue to keep signing that dotted line. And so with that being said, that's my two cents. Hey, so, uh, Ron, I'll turn it over to you to close us out. But, hey, for the audience out there, go on and ask to join the group, Freestyle Every Day for Everybody. I will tell you, it is one of the most inspiring pages I've seen. I'm a guy that spent 38 years on active duty and became the senior enlisted person in the DOD. But I absolutely love going on there and listening to people like RLGJ or some of these other leaders across our force get on there and give their thoughts about uh, some – some very good issues, but also some contention issues. And don't forget to follow uh, the Veterans Lending Group page. And don't forget to follow the SEAC Retired John Wayne Troxel page. Uh, hashtag Motivation Monday every Monday. And I will tell you, Hurricane's got me fired up. I really got to up my game for this Monday. So, uh, Ron, over to you. Thanks for yeah. everybody for tuning in. Yeah, I'd like to say uh, just, uh, you know, thank you so much, uh, Mark, for, uh, for, for joining the show. It's always a pleasure to meet. Um, you know, people that, uh, that, that, that John's connected with and he knows, and it, it really, it, it's, it's so interesting because, um, and, and what you say about, you know, the love that, and passion that you have for the army. And, and I think obviously all three of us share that, but, you know, look at, look at, look at this screen right now, right? You've, you've got, you've, you've got people from all different walks of life, different cultures, yes. mixed cultures, yes. but what you see right here is something that my father showed me a long time ago in Time Magazine. He says, son, this is what the future of America looks like. And it was people with all different faces and stuff on it. And when you look at this, this right now, um, and, and we see where we're going, when you say the Army is a, a perfect system ran by, you know, imperfect people, it, it, we're humans. But if, 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 as a testament, and we've said this before in our last show, is that in the Army, we, you can throw anyone, we'll just say the Army right now, okay? You can throw any one of us, from 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 privates of this generation, that generation, other, and you give us an obstacle, we're going to figure that out. Whether that be race, gender, race, creed, or whatever, and push that forward. And um, I, I just just would like to pass on to the to everybody that if, if you see what's going on, this is real. This is absolutely us. What you're seeing is a true representation of what our military is. Not all the crap and the bullshit that's going on out there. And and when you're talking about. The, that upholding that constitution. This is what you see. This is what we get. You get the realness. You know, there isn't some robots. This isn't some agenda. You've got you've got representation from the private all the way up to senior leadership to the top uh, senior enlisted advisor. One of the, in, in my opinion, the best senior enlisted advisor that, 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 that we've seen in this United States. Uh, but you know, that's 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 I'm, I'm probably biased there. But with that. On behalf of Veterans Landing Group, we want to thank all of you for tuning into the Ron and John Show. Uh, and uh, as you all know, we're all about education. Uh, you are our family. Um, if there's anything that we can do to help you out with your refinance, with your new purchase, uh, we are licensed in all 50 states. We can ETS, PCS, retire, wherever it is that you are. And we're, uh, it'd be a pleasure to help you out uh, uh, as well. 
tune in to our, uh, our education classes at vahomelandbootcamp.com. Um, and uh, feel free to check out some of the rest of our episodes in the Rod and John show. And with that, uh, again, Mark, Mark thank you, you got to come much. back, man. man. Mark, you got to come back to the show. Have, absolutely. Me, come back. How much fun did we have here, though, y'all, today? Oh, I mean, man. I'm just I like, bye. man, that, this hurricane, this knife hands and all this, man, you before the knife hands, you had me fired up. You had both John and I in our soapboxes jumping up and and, and, and John, I got to say, you, you say the freestyle, you know, like you do, but you got to give, you, you got to close us out with the Ron and John uh, 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 a chant that you made up. East Coast with the most. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with that, I'm to the Ron and John show. We're known coast to coast like butter and toast. We, shoot, I can't even remember now. We can, <laughs> we can make ISIS surrender or die, and we're pretty cool, or we're pretty, as, as, uh, the meetings were pretty fly or something. I can't yeah. even remember. You caught me off guard, brother. But the bottom line is we're here to have fun. We're coming out to a base near you soon. And if we come to to Fort Leavenworth, uh, Mark, we would love to have you on again or whenever oh, yeah. we can get back on. Oh, you yeah. are a leader. You are the future of our United States Army and the Joint Force. And I am just humbled and proud to call you friend, man. Thank That's you very awesome. much. God bless you. We appreciate it. We gotta, we gotta be. Let's take it live to Fort Leonard. Let's, let's do that. We gotta take oh, the wrong it, man. Let's let's it. Hey, you come let's get the fortieth MP battalion troops on. Let's get you it. Let's get it, y'all. Y'all heard it here first. Thanks a lot. We'll see y'all next week. Thanks so much.